Well, hello, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's St. Patrick's Day. Wow, that's cool. Have you watched a cool video on St. Patrick today? There's a bunch of them out there. St. Patrick was a good guy. So that would be a really great unit study for the day, wouldn't it? I'm getting ahead of myself. This is Chatting with Chap, and I'm your host, Ginger Wade. I'm so glad you're here with me today. So like I was saying, it is St. Patrick's Day, so it's a great opportunity to learn about who St. Patrick was. And um, like I said, great little unit study opportunity there. Um, we like to also um, remember the day by having a green shake. So <laughs> make sure you enjoy some green. I forgot to wear green today. Oh my goodness. So embarrassed. Anyway, today is question and answer day. I've received lots of questions through Facebook and on our webpage. So I want to be able to answer your questions today. So, um, and you can share that information around with other people. And hopefully those who have asked are watching. So first of all, um, we're going to talk about the conferences. I am so excited because people are signing up. That's so, so good. I'm going to show our webpage where you can go out and get all information on what I'm talking about today. So... Uh, yeah, people are signing up. Lots of people um, coming out and signing up for the kids programs and everything. We have uh, lots of people coming in with questions about the conference. So I'm going to answer a few of those questions before I get to the other questions that have come in recently. So uh, I do encourage you all, if you are considering coming, go to sprucelake.chaponline.com and woodcrest.chaponline.com and there you will find lots of information. People do write in and ask, well, who's, who are the vendors coming? Who are the speakers? Well, all the information is there on those web pages, so you can check that out. And there's also information about the children's programs there and lunch. Yay! So it's all there. Check it out. And I wanted to let you guys know that we are in an early bird pricing time frame. So that's just this week. It ends on the 21st of March. So if you want to get your little discount in, you're going to have to sign up this week. So I encourage you to do that. And there's another thing I wanted to make sure that you knew about Woodcrest. Woodcrest is a Christian camp, and it's kind of like on a mountain. So there's it's hilly. Now, the, the paths from here to there is paved. So if you have a stroller, I mean, you can push it or whatever. Um, anyone who's walking can walk on a path. But it is, there's up and down. So there's a little bit of walking to do there. It's not like a conference center like Spruce Lakes. So I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of that out there. Um, I had some folks write in and ask about the dates. Why May and why back-to-back -back dates? So... Back in the day, those of you who are old school and have been around for a while like me, remember that the convention always used to be on Mother's Day weekend. Always, always, always. It's like how everybody would remember that it was going on. Although the funny thing is, we were always the second weekend in May and Mother's Day didn't always hit the second weekend. So it was this big mess. Anyway, it was usually with Mother's Day. Um, so this is actually back to when we used to have our um, convention. It's the same time of the year. And when you're planning a convention, you really kind of have to go with what the venue has available. And the venue is where you're going to have it. So they have other things going on. Um, so if there's no other weekends available, then you go with the weekend that they have available. So that's why we picked the weekends that we did pick. Uh, the back-to-back -back sometimes makes it easier for the vendors and speakers to get there because they're in the same area of the state or the country, and they can kind of hover in that area since they're kind of close. Uh, that was actually a benefit to having it there. I know we've had some people ask about having one out west, and I have responded to them and said, we would love to have one in the Pittsburgh area. We were looking at doing a Learning Differences conference out there before 2020 happened. Um, our challenge is... We need boots on the ground. So we need someone who lives there, knows a good place, has connections, and can really be the, the push behind making it happen. So um, we're always looking for help. So if you'd like to have something out there on the west end of the state, let us know. Go to our contact form or message us right here on Facebook. So um, 
that's some of the information about that. And I did have some folks, I understand we have limited space, and I know you're watching my other video about why we don't have tons and tons of vendors, and we are trying to work on that and expand the space, by the way. Um, but I wanted to say that there's so much to coming to a conference, so much more than just the vendors. The vendors are valuable, don't get me wrong, super valuable um, to talk to them, to see the stuff, but it's only, okay, I think I'm back on. Okay, so they're only part of what's going on, and don't forget the speakers. Don't forget the speakers. You get so much encouragement, and they talk about more than just how to homeschool and what's the law and how do I begin and all that stuff. I mean, there's parenting stuff and just really encouraging messages in the speaker schedule. So there's that, and I think the, the super invaluable thing that's happening this year is the fact that we have not been together for so long. We need each other. We need to be together. And just that opportunity to see other homeschoolers, see how many people are doing it, um, see their families, see how what they have to, you know, have discussions with people. I just think it's invaluable to be together, see all the people who are doing what you're doing, get encouraged by that, have discussions with them. So coming, even though we may not have... You know, all the vendors you're looking for, like Rainbow Resource, I know is awesome. Um, there's value. There's still value in coming, and you won't regret it, regret it. So I encourage you to come. But if you can't come on the weekends that we're coming, I encourage you to go to homeschoolfreedom.com slash events. And what that is, is a place to find all the other state um, events. We do have some friends who are having their events in neighboring states that have a more friendly atmosphere. So it's really interesting this year. So you can go out there to that homeschoolfreedom.com slash events. If you want to travel and go to a different state to go to an event, you go ahead and do it because get this, get what you need, you know? So there's that. Okay. So I'm moving on. That's conference questions. We're moving on to other questions right now. So this, there's a whole bunch here. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions about testing and evaluation. So if you remember last year, testing and evaluations were waived because of all the lockdowns. They are not this year. You do have to have an evaluation. You do have to do testing. It is possible to do both without leaving your house because lots of evaluators are Zooming and you can do testing online. So if that's a concern for you, it is definitely possible to do it. I'm showing our chaponline.com. If you go to resources there, you can find evaluators. You can find testers. Uh, there's lots of resources there where you can check things out. But yes, you do need to do evaluations and tests this week. And next week, we are having an evaluator interview episode of Chatting with Chap. So if you have anybody who has questions about what do I do when I go to my evaluator? Uh, what do they want? You know, all those questions. I'm going to be talking to three other evaluators and they're going to share um, their view and their suggestions for you on what an evaluation looks like. So that is next week, March 24th. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so question three, where can I find stats supporting homeschooling? We have folks who really want to stick with homeschooling and some of their family or friends are really giving them a hard time about homeschooling and they want to provide them information about the success of homeschooling. Well, let me tell you, the National Home Education Research Institute is celebrating their 30th year of doing this exact thing. They're uh, short for NARI. NARI is their, their nickname, N-H-E-R-I.org. Go out there and you can get all the information you need to support the reasons to homeschooling. It is awesome. Check it out. Okay, so number four, where can I learn more about CHAP? We are CHAP. I'm going to pop it right up right here, chaponline.com. I hope you see it. Our webpage, chaponline.com. Read through the page. It has the board members on there. You can read about us. You can read about what CHAP's all about. You can read about the things we're doing, the events that are coming out. There's ways to contact us. There's a whole bunch of tabs. Um, go check it out. Um, that's how you find out more about CHAP. Okay, where can I learn about homeschooling in Pennsylvania? Well, we have a sister site that we manage called homeschoolpennsylvania.org. Org, O-R-G, Homeschool Pennsylvania, all written out, super long. <laughs> it's 
long state. And the word homeschool is not so homeschoolpennsylvania.org. You can go out there. Tons of videos, previous chatting with chaps that I did with my friend D that explained the law. Um, there's articles about the law, all kinds of stuff out there. So go check it out. There's sample affidavits, objectives, forms that you can print off to use. You want to go check that out. And that's at um, homeschoolpennsylvania.org. Uh, all the homeschool information you need. Okay, so moving on, we have what test can I use? Well, if you go to homeschoolpennsylvania.org and you type testing in the search bar, you will get the page for testing. And it lists out, I don't know, about 12 different tests that you can use. I did a chat with chap on testing once. So if you go to our um, video repository here on Facebook and scroll back, you'll find it. There is one on testing and you can learn all about it there or go to homeschoolpennsylvania.org and check it out there. Uh, what a lot of folks are doing now is doing them online instead of going and have someone live proctor it for them because uh, it's just kind of easier. That's what I'm going to do this year for the first time. So um, there's a website called academicexcellence.org, and I think they just sell the CAT. I'm not really sure. Uh, but there's other places out there where you can get uh, testing uh, tests online, and then you don't have to go do it somewhere outside your home. Okay, so homeschoolpennsylvania.org for testing information. Okay, someone wanted to know if they could advertise with CHAP. Yes, we do have sell advertisements on our webpage and for our e-news. And we have vendors that buy video spots. Have you guys been watching the video spots? Carolyn is our new resource room host. She's been doing vendor video spots, sharing about different locations. And I saw some folks want swag bags, so super cool. Check those things out. And uh, yes, you can advertise with CHAP. If you go to chaponline.com, I'm popping it up on the screen right now, contact advertisers. There's a section there for you. You can also send me email under that same contact thing. Send us a form and I will answer your question here on chatting with CHAP. Uh, so if you guys remember in the past, we had, it will be two marches ago now, we had a college and career fair at E-Town College. It was great. And then last year it got shut down, and this year we're not allowed to do it yet either. So I'm very sad. Someone called in to ask about that. And as soon as we can, we will get that college and career fair rolling again. It was a really good event, uh, but we're not going to be able to do it this year. So I am sorry. That question is a no. So how do I find a group in PA? This would be like a support group or a co-op. I'm going to pop up the chaponline.com again. If you go to chaponline.com and go under the resources tab, there is actually a search engine for support groups. So you can go there and check it out. It'll show you by county. So you can connect with some groups there. And other things that are on our resources tab, there is so much under there. I just wanted to let you know what's there today. We've got a sign up for our CHAP e-news. Did you know we had an e-news? You're going to want to sign up. Lots of links and good stuff on that e-news. Go to chaponline.com slash resources. Go to the resources tab. It's right there. Um, articles. There's lots of post previous articles from our magazine. You can search for support groups, evaluators, testers. There is a scholarship for graduating seniors that is going on right now. Sign up and apply for the scholarship. You seniors out there, it's $1,000 for first place, $500 for second place. You're going to want to check that out. Our scholarships, there's also a community calendar. You can get recordings from our previous events, and there's an online store. And that's just in the resources tab. So you're going to want to get out there and check out our website. There's lots of stuff there. Okay, now I'm going to sheet number two for my next question that we had. So um, someone wrote in and asked, can we choose an evaluator from our end or is there a list of evaluators to choose from? Uh, like I said before, chaponline.com resources. There is a list of evaluators there, but you can also choose your own. You don't have to choose off of that list. They just have to be an evaluator in the state of Pennsylvania. Now there's, there's, we're going to talk about that next week on our evaluators interview episode. But if you go back to previous chat with chaps, or if you go to homeschoolpennsylvania.org and search for evaluators or evaluations, you will find a whole um, chat with chap episode that talks about eva evaluators. I think there might even be two 
where we talk about how you become one, who can be one, and all that. So there are resources out there. I know there's video resources out there about how to be an evaluator. Um, but you can choose your own evaluator. And the second part of that question was, can the evaluation be done virtually or does it need to be done in person? You can do either. So there's lots of evaluators doing it over Zoom now. Or um, we still go to our evaluator's house. So either way, whatever way is comfortable for you, find the person who does that thing and go for it. So hopefully that answered your question there. Okay, the next question says, hey, I was looking into homeschooling my five-year-old. I'm wondering if five years of age is the right age to start because I read somewhere that starts at six. Would you please help me out as I'm completely new to this? So, okay, so traditionally we have put children in school at five years of age. Honestly, we're teaching our children from the day they're born, right? We're teaching them all different kinds of things. They're learning how to eat, how to hold a cup, how to get dressed, how to brush their teeth. You know, when they're little, 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 baby, baby, little, they're learning to recognize faces and to speak, to communicate. So we are teaching from the get-go. Um, we start to introduce academics when they get a little older. So that just tends to be when the child is ready. So now the whole magical age of six, it actually used to be eight. Did you know that? Our It's called the compulsory age. And compulsory kind of implies that you got to do it. Okay, so it used to be eight, so you could keep your child home until they were eight years old and then formally enroll them in school if that's what you chose to do. But um, the compulsory age has been lowered to six. So it, it just means that that is when the state says, hey, we need to have a record that your child's learning somewhere at, you know, at the age of six. Uh, you can start your child before six if your child is ready. Uh, if you're homeschooling, you can file the affidavit, but teach things that are at a level that they are ready for when they are six. They do not have to be kindergarten, first grade, second grade, whatever. They don't have to be a certain something at the age of six. You just need to file the affidavit and tell the state, hey, you know what, I'm doing this thing. And then you do it the way you need to do it. So um, that's what happens with with that. Now, as far as not having a clue what to do, again, check out homeschoolpennsylvania.org. Watch all those videos or go back here to the video repository that we have right here on Facebook and watch all those videos. What are we at? 118? Is that what number we're at today? 117? We have so many of these videos talking to you and helping you homeschool. Go binge chatting with chat. <laughs> It'll help you out. Um, and specifically, episode 89 talks about, it's me talking about the compulsory age and um, what the law says and what the Department of Education says and what CHAP says. and what It's interesting. So check out episode 89. Did I say 98? It's 89. It's 89. Episode 89 is the compulsory age one. It's me all alone with, in my green living room. So anyway, check that out. And if you're concerned about starting your child, don't just keep them home and love on them and love learning together with them. And like I said, binge watch Chat with Chap. You will learn so much and be encouraged and come to our conferences because you'll be encouraged there too. Christy Rucker, who is our e-news girl, is going to be telling us all about how to homeschool according to the law and how to get started and how to keep it simple. She wrote a book called The Simple Homeschool. Did you know that? She's got a book on how to keep it simple. And she's going to be there talking at the conferences about this. So if you're concerned about getting started, sign up. Spruce Lake at chaponline.com or Woodcrest at chaponline.com. I'm going to pop up our webpage again so you can go under the events tab and find those web links and you can get there and sign up. Those will be super helpful. The last thing I have here on my list, it's been a really great time with you today, is the used curriculum sale. For those of you who have been to a CHAP event before, the, specifically the convention, we normally have what we call the UCS. It's the used curriculum sale where everybody brings in their curriculum. This is huge, massive sale where you can get stuff mega cheap, which of course we all love. Unfortunately, since our events are smaller and every single inch that we have put to put towards vendors, we're giving to vendors. So we're not having a used curriculum sale at our conferences. However, the good news is we have a wonderful woman who has contacted me and is going to be looking into having a separate used curriculum sale at a separate time 
in a separate location. So I have no details for you about that whatsoever at this point. However, I might have some information for you before too long. So um, there could be a UCS in the future, which would be wonderful because everybody loves to do use curriculum sale shopping. So that was the end of all of my questions. I'm going to pop our website up one more time. Please go to that website. Go into those tabs. We have so many resources to support you. Use them. And I did want to say um, a big shout out to our donators, the folks who are donating to us. Thank you so much. You're helping us get through this time. And of course, to our volunteers. We have year-round volunteers that are doing everything. Uh, we used to have some paid staff who took care of organizing our convention, and we couldn't keep them because of COVID. We had to let them go because we couldn't have our conference last year, and it was so sad. So now everything that's happening is happening by volunteer. Everything. And we would be nowhere without them. So I am so thankful. We have Facebook folks and media folks doing that. We have convention folks doing that. And now our new helper who is going to look into UCS. And we just we just can't do this without their volunteers. So I'm thankful for them. I know everybody else who's working with CHAP is thankful for each other. Um, so if you're interested in helping, just let us know. Send us a note. And uh, you can also donate to help us to, con to stay up, keep afloat, and keep doing this stuff because we love to support you. We would love um, to keep doing these things and hope and next year we'll be able to do the big convention again like we have in the past. But, okay, I think that's all your questions that I have currently. If you have more, please post below or go to that chaponline.com and go to the contact form under, under um, contact and let me know your questions. I want to answer them here so everybody else can be helped also. But thanks for tuning in today. It was good to be with you again. I hope this was helpful. And we will see you next week when we are with evaluators. Three evaluators. I'm going to interview them. And they're going to share, us, share with us some information about evaluations. Woohoo! So 1 o'clock next week. It'll probably be a long one. So give yourself a nice break there between one and two next week. All right. Take care, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Bye.